Uh, it's always so great to see gardens in transition. And right now we're going to be talking about transitioning uh, the seeds we can plant. Uh, I'm joined by uh, John Thomas from Wild Seed Farms. It's great to have you back with us, John. Thank you. Thank you. Good to be back. Well, we're going to be talking about putting seeds to the ground in Texas in summer, which uh, doesn't make a lot of sense to people who are familiar with wildflowers. But uh, there are a lot of people who have that first great experience with wildflowers and they want more. And so we're going to be uh, talking about things that do well in the summer, right? Uh, well, that's exactly what we're going to talk about. All right. So there are uh, some different rules for some of the things we'll be talking about. But uh, we're going to start by talking about a really popular family, the sunflowers. You can have a great production through the summer with these. Well, everybody loves sunflowers. Yeah. And sunflowers, if you look at a sunflower, the middle part is a composite. Guess what that attracts? Mm -hmm. Bees. Right. And everybody's into bee and pollen and pollinators and whatever. Right. So uh, we're really seeing an uptick on uh, uh, sunflowers, uh, seed sales. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, we're spending a lot of time talking to people about how to grow sunflowers. And uh, a couple of days ago, I had a, a customer in the store and they said, I want a sunflower, but I want it to bloom all summer. And I a said, well, you know, uh, uh, that one plant's going to bloom about six weeks at peak. And uh, then it's going to die on it. And try this. Try to plant some now. Three weeks later, plant some more. Three weeks later, plant some more. And you set up that bloom succession. Right. And, uh, of course, you know, um, I love the big sunflower, the old mammoth gray stripe. And right, right. Because I tell a lot of people, and uh, uh, you know, once they bloom out and the seed hardens, you cut that head off and hang it on a fence, and now you got a natural bird feeder. Exactly. And it gives room for the other one that comes up later, mm -hmm. so you got another bloom. So yes, you can have sunflowers blooming all summer if you'll stagger plant. And there, the, the variety of, of, of colors and forms of sunflowers is staggering, including some, we have a great native sunflower. Yeah. Yeah, the Maximilian sunflower is fabulous. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> we treat, uh, a lot of people come to our place and say, how do you get your Maximilian to have that many blooms on it? And I tell a lot of people, especially when it comes to native plants, mm -hmm. Maximilians are native sunflower. Sure. And don't be afraid to, you know, uh, it, it, it's setting up a, a good, uh, nice foliage right now. It's very right. attractive foliage He's sure. all summer long, and then mm -hmm. it starts blooming. But I tell people, especially against a wall, mm -hmm. if they'll cut that thing in like June, July at a 45, everywhere they cut it, it's going to sprout two more uh, stems. Right. So guess what? You've just increased your bloom potential two to three times. Right. And if it'll do that up against the wall, then you've got a bank of color. So uh, Maximilian is a lot of fun to grow. And guess what? It blooms in September. Yeah. And guess what Texas looked like in <laughs> September? <laughs> yeah, like a dust bowl <laughs> often. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah. So it gives us some good fall color. Okay. Well, you know, uh, thinking about w where to plant these things, uh, uh, there's a great tip on t in terms of the bed. But uh, the f plants we're talking about here really require good garden soil for the most part. You don't put, just scatter these like <clears throat> you do the wildflowers. Well, you know, when we're dealing with uh, sunflowers, you remember that's what birds love. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what you find in bird <laughs> yeah, food. Right. So uh, if you want to put them on top of the ground, you just fed a lot of birds. <laughs> right. Let's talk about seed depth. Okay. I get this all the time, and our biggest, our largest problem with people that have never planted seed before is they intentionally plant them too deep. Right. Um, and I always try to educate people and tell them, you know, it, whether you're planting corn or sunflowers or okra mm -hmm. or wildflower seed, blue bonnets, whatever, remember this. You always plant a seed as deep as three times the seed's diameter. Okay. And everybody goes, whoa, you know, that's pretty shallow. Most of our wildflower seed are very, very it's small. Tiny, yeah. So guess what? You just throw that on top. Right. And pray for rain. Now you get a sunflower seed, pretty good mm -hmm. size sunflower seed. Guess what? Three times its diameter, that's all you need to do. Especially cover it up a little bit, hide it a little bit from the birds. Right. <laughs> but with correct moisture and good soil, you, you should be able to get a sunflower up in, in four to five days. 
Yeah. Uh, it's for germination. And you know, and that's one of the things that I really love about the plants we're talking about is how much fun they are for kids to see them grow. But that's that's one of the things that we have we have generations that have never planted seed. And I want to tell you something: the 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 look in their eye and the excitement that they reveal when they plant a seed and it turns into a plant or mm -hmm. germinates. You can't keep them away. Right. I mean, they're out there looking at that garden every day. They're not looking at that iPad or iPhone or whatever. That's one of the things that, that really interests kids is because that's their baby. They planted it, and it's <clears> growing, <throat> and, and, and that's there. So they, there's a real commitment there. Let's talk about another plant family, one that has in incredible variety, and they're really tough survivors in our Texas summers are the Cosmos. Cosmos, probably uh, the most underutilized summer flower in, in the South. And the reason for it is, is because people just aren't aware of the many, uh, all the different species of, of Cosmos. And uh, for years, people, uh, when they would plant it, they would plant it at the wrong time of the year. But this, this Cosmos is one that lasts at 110 degree temperature. I mean, it's home sweet home. Right. So guess what? In Texas, that would be a great one right. to plant in a bloom success start in May, you mm -hmm. know, after the chance of freeze. Same sure. thing with sunflower. Right. These guys can't take freezes, but right. boy, I want to tell you something. They're, they're go-getters in the summertime. What I like about Cosmos also is it's, it's semi-drought tolerant. It's, yeah. it's, it's pretty drought tolerant. Yeah, they, they are incredible plants and they're great for bringing uh, uh, butterflies and other critters into the yeah. garden. Yeah, it. Uh, you see a lot of activity. And again, I gotta emphasize, if you really wanna attract wildlife wild or insect, mm -hmm. uh, pollinators, Remember, if you can push, if you can stagger plant these and have them blooming in September, October, th this is this is They'll this is when going. nothing else is in bloom hardly. Right. So uh, you're very you're benefiting all of those guys having color in September, October. Yeah. Well, the, one other plant that we want to call out is zinnias, and yeah. there are again countless varieties of zinnia. They come from Mexico. They're they're really tough in our Texas summers, yeah. and there are all sorts of new forms. I'm looking at this one is cactus flowered zinnia. Yeah. It really caught my eye. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the rays on it, or or somewhat curl. It's a really really uh, good one for mass plantings. And when I say mass planting, I'm talking about you know f uh, a couple of thousand square feet or whatever. Sure. If you really want to accent, everybody may have a vegetable garden. Uh, uh, in the spring and all of a sudden I said, well, I wonder what we do with that area. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, Cosmos, um, I mean, uh, Xenia is fantastic for that. And it's got good stem length. Uh, I like the cactus because it has the color hue of the southwest look. Right, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's got those orange tones yeah. in there that yeah. are really beautiful, yeah. russet and orange, yeah. great. Yeah. Well, real briefly, John, I wanna mention one uh, other Texas native, and that's right. the scarlet sage, because everybody has a, a shady spot. Exactly. And this is a great one for that. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, scarlet shade is a uh, butterfly, I mean a hummingbird, a favorite. Yeah. It's Tubular flower. We'll, we'll handle shade. Right, and these are really tiny seeds, easy to distribute in the shady spots, and they come yeah. up readily, and yeah. just a terrific plant. Yeah, plant that in the fall yeah. in the south, Yeah, uh, like September, October, right. no problem. Well, people can find Wild Seed Farms out in Fredericksburg, Texas. You had a great spring this year, and I wish many more for you in the years to come. Thank you. Thank you very much. Always a pleasure visiting with you. Thanks okay. for being a part of the show, John Thomas from Wild Seed Farms. And coming up next is our friend Daphne.